If you could have some pog banter about two hours from now, when my laundry finishes, that would be much appreciated. Okay, okay. Um, hi, Siri. Sorry, I forgot. Hi, Bixby. Set a reminder for two hours from now to have some good banter for when Toasty's laundry comes out of the dryer. Today at 11.06 a.m. All right. Reminder saved. Seems about right. That's a Chat GPT-4 just came out 49 hours ago. Here's 49 amazing things that it can do to enhance your life. Emoji pointing downwards, thread emoji. I saw a thread like that. Um, like number three on the list was have your business idea criticized or critiqued by a famous person. Um, so it, it said, it was like, critique my business plan as if you were Steve Jobs. And then it was, it was like selling it as if you could actually get wisdom from Steve Jobs from the grave. Like he would, it would tap into his soul and be like, I would, I hope that that's not how it works. Because if my ass was in eternal slumber and then they were like, Steve, Steve, wake up. It's a grilled cheese sandwich, but like you make it yourself at the store. I'd be like, dude, five more minutes, bitch, five more minutes. I'm not ready to come back yet. What was this? Hang on. San Francisco grilled cheese startup. How the trendiest grilled cheese venture <laughs> got burnt. Oh, man. The melt had cash technology in some of Silicon Valley's finest minds, yet it failed to disrupt the humble sandwich. In the spring of 2011, more than 500 tech luminaries, kingmakers, entrepreneurs, and journalists convened in yada, 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 $4,795 a head to talk to Mark Andreessen, yada, yada, yada. He teased a new company that founded on the exact same fundamentals that led to the invention of the Flip HD camera. The new company was called The Melt. Its slogan was Grilled Cheese Happiness. The sandwiches formed a minimalist menu accompanied by only soup. It turns out when you put soup and grilled cheese together, it's really wonderful, Kaplan informed his audience, as if divulging a trade secret. Forget Mars colonies and AI, Kaplan had declared that he had developed a set of technology that allows us to make the perfect grilled cheese. It's called butter and maybe like a cast iron pan. The Melt group boasted an elite group of investors, including Sequoia Capital, better known for its bets on Instagram and YouTube, and enough cash to launch 20 restaurants as a, at a cost of $500,000 to $1 million apiece. With the home appliance company Electrolux, he created a device that delivered a restaurant-quality sandwich. You're opening restaurants, man! It's got to be a restaurant-quality sandwich. You, you are a restaurant. When you say restaurant-quality, that's usually for, like, your house. And it's a lie, but anyway, you can have a restaurant quality sandwich in 45 seconds flat. A huge breakthrough in sandwich technology. Sandwich presses have been around forever, protested a skeptical Mossberg. It's not a sandwich press, Kaplan retorted. This is two induction burners. Microwaves. Silpats. I don't know what a silpat is, I'll admit. Next, this is from 2017. Next month marks the six-year anniversary of the Melt's onstage debut, debut. Far from 500 stores, it now runs a grand total of 18 outlets. I mean, you can. this is an idea that you should poo-poo because it already came out. I mean, it sounded stupid when it came out, and then also it, it then failed. So this is like, you can definitely go in on it. And you might say it's punching down to, like, uh, to kick a business like this when it's already deceased, but... This is one of those things, it's emblematic of the zero interest rate phenomenon that we lived in for the past decade. They raised $20 million in startup capital to open a franchise of grilled cheese restaurants before the first one even existed as a proof of concept. Here's the way that the restaurant business works, kid. A really, really passionate person opens a restaurant leveraging their retirement fund, okay? They cook amazing food, it becomes really popular, it becomes uh, like an anchor tenant in the community, 
And then they get dollar signs in their eyes and they say, we got to expand and bring this to more people. All of a sudden, that local restaurant now has four restaurants within the same area code and they're still keeping the quality like relatively consistent. And then somebody from Calgary goes to Vancouver and says, wow, this place is great. I'd love to franchise it. They say, why not? It's free money. All of a sudden, you got... Uh, a hundred of them are now open across the, the country. Uh, every single one that opens somehow drains the quality of all the other ones that already exist. And then, you know, 20 years after it was founded, it goes from being a place where you could go with your family, sit down, have a nice meal at a reasonable price to uh, Earl's where a plate of nachos is $32. But at least uh, they're in every airport terminal in Western Canada. You don't just open them all at once. I know the pipeline. A lot, lot of restaurants in the pipeline right now. The, people are not ready for this take yet. Some very good uh, Vancouver restaurants are in that pipeline right now. A couple of good Vancouver restaurants. They've, they've already opened their first YVR airport location. I, that maybe I'll be proven wrong, but to me that seems like the beginning of the end. Don't go. I'm not going off about Sally Lamont. I'm just saying... <laughs> I hope you enjoyed it while it lasted, okay? Because the, there's such a... Uh, there's market forces at play, okay? There's such a gap in good Mexican food in Vancouver that, like, a, a restaurant that's merely good can, can fill that gap and take over. It's gray goo. Not the food. The food was okay, but it's, like, the gray goo phenomenon. Yeah, there's complex macroeconomics. So I was trying to explain that nobody, everyone was just laughing in Justin's chat last night. Ha 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 ha. Ha 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 ha. Oh, it's so funny. Watching Justin watch a game show. All of a sudden, he's watching a Canadian game show. They won $6,000 over the course of a week in 1987. And, uh, hang on, do I have this set up right? Yeah, more or less. Justin's friend Bloody says, let's look at how the Canadian dollars performed. Whoa, it was pretty strong in 1980, but whoa, it tanked in like 2012. I wonder why the Canadian dollar is so bad. I'm typing like a madman in Justin's chat. There's complex macroeconomic forces at bay. First, we're an export-focused economy and the United States is our biggest trade partner, so we need to keep our dollar a little bit weaker artificially in order to, you know, have be able to stay competitive with American producers. Also, the Canadian fund has stopped raising interest rates, which means that enormous institutional depositors are more likely to transfer their money out of CAD into USD because they can eke out a couple of extra basis points because it seems like the US Fed is going to keep hiking for a bit. Everyone is going, ha 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 ha, well, that's, the game show is so funny, the game show is so funny, I'm like, fuck it, listen to me! There's a lot of, there's a lot of inputs, okay? It's not just your dollar is weak or your country sucks, okay? They all suck for, like, different reasons. Dow Jones Industrial Average lost 367 points, 1.2%. 1 S&P 500 slid 1%, while the NASDAQ Composite was down 0.8%. Excuse me, this is not... The, why are they using the past tense? The market only opened three hours ago. There's still, um... Still, like, four, and, four hours and 45 minutes to go. They shouldn't say slid. They should say is sliding. <laughs> You didn't sell, did you, Anand, when the S&P 500 went down 367 points? That would actually be like 9%. That would be a, that would be a pretty catastrophic day. We don't talk about the Dow because I'm not 100 years old.